I have no idea what's going on with this weather, but last night I had to cover up my irrigation just to make sure we were in a freeze warning again. And I didn't think there'd really be any problem with it, but I just wanted to make sure. So today I was out checking, making sure everything looks okay. And so far everything looks like it's fine. And just waiting for this warmer weather to come. It's just not happening. Ups and downs and ups and downs just have everything completely confused right now. No idea. And it's mid-May, so hoping we change this soon. It also feels like no matter how organized my shed is at one point, quickly becomes not so organized. So I'm finally seeing some rain in the forecast. Man, we've needed some rain this spring here and it just hasn't been happening. So I'm finally seeing that. I want to show you what this dethatched area sort of looks like. Definitely looking a little stressed out and it's very dry at this point. It needs some rain. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And then also I'm gonna put some fertilizer on it here so that when we do get this rain, it can jumpstart some of the recovery on that. You can definitely tell the trees aren't liking it. These plants from my wife's garden really need to go in the garden soon. Hopefully by the end of this week we can get that done. Lawn overall just has not looked normal this year and I've talked about that a little bit, but the color just doesn't look the way that it should at this point. It's not growing very vigorously either. Hopefully this rain, warmer temperatures will start to remedy some of what's going on. So I don't know how well this will show on the camera, but you can definitely see some of these dry areas. They're starting to get wilted. Almost at this point, honestly, it's starting to look more like a really hot weather look to this grass. And it hasn't been hot at all, but just from lack of moisture. Oh yeah, still using the old spreader here. This stuff is just, it's fall turf food, but again, Fall just being a certain formula that they would recommend for fall doesn't mean you have to use it in fall. Let's look at what's in the bag here. We got 20% urea nitrogen, 9% potash, a little bit of iron in there, and 5% of that urea is coated so that it will be slower to release. This is a good number because I want a little more of the potash here since we're in sort of a stressful period, which we wouldn't normally be in spring, but I want to add a little more of that in and according to the settings here, if I set this pretty close, uh, 4.25 on a Scots, which I have, apply 3.2 pounds per thousand square feet for coverage of 10,000. So doing a little quick math there, so 3.2 pounds times you got 20% nitrogen in the bag, that would come up with an application of 0.64 pounds of nitrogen. That's a good amount without going too crazy, so I feel pretty comfortable with that. So seriously, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this spreader other than it's plastic, it's cheap, and does it do the job it has for me and I've been using it since 2012. I seriously had to laugh the other day though because someone said to me, there's no way that you actually use that thing in your yard, you're just using it on the videos, and once you turn the video off you're using something better. And I was like, why would I use it in the videos and then use something else the rest of the time? They're like, well, you're obviously sponsored by Scott's, and I was like, that's news to me.
Well, good morning. I'm back at it today, and I actually have to say that it's a pretty nice day out so far. I'm gonna go check the rain gauge and see how much rain we got, and also, sun's trying to come out today, birds are chirping, so can't complain too much about that. We need some definite heat without it getting too hot to get going here, because we're still lagging behind. So there's an inch. Eh, it's pretty close to an inch and three one hundredths. Definitely some much needed rain there. I want to show you a couple things of interest here that I just saw as well. First off is some people wanted an update on these bare spots that I moved a plug to. So you can see here we still haven't got to our aggressive spring growth yet. So this should still move quite a ways I would assume here before we get to our actual summer. But that's looking pretty good so far. So right now I want to show you the absolute worst section of my lawn and you're probably going to ask why am I doing this? Actually I've been meaning to do this because it sort of proves a point of a few things I've been talking about recently which is that you can still mow lower and I'm doing this on the exact same type of grass in my backyard and it looks much more fantastic than this does by far. But also the fact that you have to actually continue to feed your grass in order for it to really be its best. So this area I've left for the last couple seasons. I've not fed it with any fertilizer. I've simply just been mowing, nothing else. And I've been returning the clippings to this area. I've been returning all those clippings back here, but I haven't been actually adding any fertilizer to it. And you will see that there's a lot of weeds invading. It's very thin. So I use this area basically just as my test to see what would my bluegrass look like if I wasn't doing any of the rest of my steps, all the maintenance stuff, which is really not all that much, but it is important to show you, you still need to feed your lawn here in order to get it to be the best that it can be. So I got my reel sharpened for the Electra and I'm excited to get that thing back going again. So I've said this before, but the great thing about these machines is that you can remove these reels and you don't have to take your whole machine anywhere. So I won't lie, I have been missing using that Electra just because once you get used to it, not having any noise to it really except just the little hum from the motor and not really any vibration from a gas engine or anything like that. And then going back to gas, perfectly fine, but it's just definitely a difference. So that's one thing that I noticed. Happy to get back to using the Electra a little more as well. And then I want to show you this bluegrass today because it's pretty amazing. So as I've mentioned this year, there's been just some weird things going on with our lawns and the fact that they just really have not looked normal for the time of year that they are. The ryegrass up here in the front still color is not really what it should be and so I'm sort of interested to see in the next coming weeks as we are supposed to get into some nicer weather then we'll see how it actually starts to react and look after that. But the bluegrass over here is really starting to fill in now. Aside from a few areas that I'm going to show you here in a second, I'm thrilled with how it started to get so much better since early spring. I'll show you a picture from last year on what the ryegrass was looking like as far as how dark it should be. You can notice here that it's just not there right now. But also notice the difference right now between ryegrass on that side, bluegrass right here on this side. The differences right now are obviously huge. Genetic color of this bluegrass right here is so far in my personal opinion is the best that I have seen in person. Now I haven't seen every variety. So far it's the best one that I have seen as far as color goes. 
So it's starting to thicken up really nicely as well and has a nice smooth look to it. I'm cutting at 0.6 right now, somewhere right around there, and has a nice smooth and even look to it. So here's the only issues that I'm having, little yellow spots which were not so yellow before, and that is ryegrass which I talked about earlier, kind of got mixed into here, and earlier in the spring these had grown up probably, I don't know, they were pretty tall. And I came in here with the real mower at a half an inch and I started chopping these down. And ever since then, they've really been shocked by that and not really wanting to recover. Here's another example of how you can look at knowing if it's ryegrass. I pulled some of these out right here and you'll see this purple bottom to it. The indication there is pretty easy to look at for ryegrass. And then also just going to compare easily since I have a full ryegrass lawn. I can go compare these leaves and they look identical to what's up front. All of these stems, because this grass was higher before and it was starting to understand that it wanted to be that height, then I started cutting it down and all of these stems are just a major pain in the butt right now. Which is why ryegrass and bluegrass are totally fine to have as a mix in a yard, but you have to do it evenly. I wasn't intending for this ryegrass to be in there, so it didn't get planted in here evenly. There were just few spots of seed that ended up getting in there and so then all these little tiny plants show up and it's not an even look it's not a good look because that plant wants to grow out to the side it's just one little bunch it does not spread out like the bluegrass does and then you roll over it with the mower and it doesn't get cut clean and so the remedy for this at this point is either I have to try to dig all of these little spots out maybe use my plugging tool to do that and move some plugs into here or I've just got to try to find a way to dig out those ryegrass plants by hand. It's mainly in this midnight section right here and over into there I'm pretty good so we'll see. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.